Well, everybody, God bless you. It's Fred Kropp coming to you from the Healing Rooms Apostolic Center here in Santa Maria, California. And today I want to uh, talk to you about something that the Holy Spirit, I believe, has brought to my attention about the time we're living in right now. You know, uh, for the last two and a half years, we have, all of us have been tested and has been um, challenged by losing loved ones, getting sick, COVID coming, finances being shaken, all these things that have been happening to us over the last two and a half years. Uh, these things, I believe, uh, the enemy is behind a lot of this, I believe, and they things that are happening, I believe that they're designed to undermine our faith or to rob us of faith. Today I was in a prayer meeting and I thought about 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 12. And here's what it says. Paul writes to Timothy and he says these words. He says, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life to which you were also called and have confessed or made the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on the eternal life to which you've been called, and you have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. So if I'm reading that right, we're in a fight of faith. Our faith is something that we use to fight the enemy with. And I believe that over this last two and a half years, that just systematically the enemy has, as things have happened in our lives, we got sick, or we lost a loved one, or something went wrong in our family, or different things happened with our kids, or whatever, that in our life, uh, we, it was an attack on our faith. And I believe that what God is saying right now is that we need to renew our faith. We need to um, have a fresh revelation of faith. We need to reactivate our faith. And so in this session, uh, those of you that are joining me, by the way, uh, if you're joining me on Facebook or on YouTube, uh, I want you to go to my YouTube channel, which is Fred Crop. Fred Crop. If you go there, K R O P P. When you get there, subscribe, click the bell, and click like, and then you can catch up on all these teachings that I've been doing. Anyhow, so the enemy's been attacking our faith, and so I believe that God is saying. We need to renew the fight of faith. Here it says, fight the good fight of faith. That means it's a good fight. It's only a good fight when you win. And so in this session, I want to talk to you about why is faith such a big deal? Why is faith so important? And so I want to just share with you several things that we receive and do by faith. So let's pray right now. Let's ask the Holy Spirit to speak to us and to speak through me as I share with you. And in this session, my desire is to stimulate in you why would I need to, you know, activate my faith or reactivate my faith or make sure that my faith is strong. So let's pray. Father, we thank you once again for Jesus, that Jesus came into the world. And Lord, he came to show us how to live. And Lord, I believe that Jesus lived totally by faith. And so, Lord, I pray today, Holy Spirit, that you will speak to us. I pray you'll grant us the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you. I pray that you'll open up our eyes. And, Lord, if there's areas that we've been blinded to or we haven't seen where the enemy has taken advantage of us by robbing us of our faith, God, I pray for a restoration of faith in those that are watching right now in Jesus' name. And, Lord, we promise to give you all the credit and all the glory Amen and amen. Can you say amen to that? Well, how big of a deal is faith? Well, you know, the Bible actually talks about the law of faith. In Romans 3.27, it says this. It says, where is boasting then? It's excluded. By what law of works? No, but by the law of faith. So actually, there is a law of faith. And we need to understand that law, what it is, how it works, and how it affects our life. Now, what are some of the things that we receive and we do by faith? I bet you already know a bunch of these, but let me just start listing them off so you get the idea how important faith is. 
You know what? We're saved by faith. That's right. Isn't that right? We're saved by faith. Faith In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, it says, For by grace you have been saved through faith and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. And so we get saved. We get born again by faith. Another one is that we please God by faith. I bet you already knew that one, right? Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6, it says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him for he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So without faith, we can't please God. How many of you want to please God? I want to please God. And one of the ways we please God, the main way we please God is by faith faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. Here's another one, and that is that we are justified by faith. What does justified mean? It means that we are made right with God. We have right standing with God. Justified means just as if I have never sinned. And so we are justified by faith. It tells us in Romans 3.28, it says, therefore, we conclude, Paul says, that a man is justified, justified by faith apart from the deeds of of the law. So we're made right with God. Here, let's go back here again. We're saved by faith. We please God by faith. We're justified by faith. Now, not only that, how many of you like grace? We all need grace, right? Grace is not an excuse to sin. Grace is the desire, the power, and the ability to do the will of God. Grace is the ability to overcome sin, the world, and the devil. So how do we get grace? Well, Romans 5, 2 says that we access God's grace by faith. This is Romans 5, 2. Through whom, talking about Jesus, we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand. And so if you want to receive grace, you have to receive it by faith. Here's another one. We receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit or filling of the Holy Spirit by faith. Galatians chapter 3, verse 2 says this. Paul says, I want to learn from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of a law or by the hearing of faith? Now, Jesus said he would send us the, the comforter, the Holy Spirit. He said, not many days from now, you're going to be filled or baptized with the Holy Spirit. Now, the Holy Spirit gives us, he is the power of God. He's a person who comes to live inside of us, and he empowers us. Well, how do we receive the Holy Spirit? We receive him by faith. Here's another one. We overcome the temptations of the world by faith. 1 John chapter 5, verse 4 says this, For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. So we overcome the world, the devil, sin, the flesh, by faith. So we overcome the world by our faith. Here's another one. We receive wisdom from God by faith. How many of you could use some wisdom right now? James writes in James chapter 1, verses 5 and 6, he says, If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives liberally and without reproach. It will be given to him. But, verse 6, let him ask in faith with no doubting. So God wants to give you wisdom. How do you get wisdom? You get it by asking in faith. You believe and receive wisdom from God. Here's another one. We obtain the promises of God by faith. In Hebrews chapter 11, which is the faith chapter, I encourage you to go there and look at the faith chapter. But in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 33, it says this about the people who operated in faith throughout history. It says this, through faith, they subdued kingdoms, worked righteousness. Listen to this, obtained promises stopped the mouths of lions. So you say, well, how do I obtain the promises of God? There are something like 700 promises of God in the Bible. Well, how do we obtain these promises? Here in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 33, it tells us we get them by faith. So we lay hold of the promises of God by faith. Another thing is we receive healing by faith. So there's so many scriptures on this. I just picked one out. Mark 5, 34, talking about the woman with the issue of blood who says, it says she heard about Jesus and she 
must have believed at that moment because it says she got up and she went to him and she kept saying over and over, if I just touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. And the moment she found and she worked her way through the crowd, pressed her way through the crowd, she must have been crawling through the crowd. She reached out and touched the hem of Jesus' garment and immediately her sickness went away. She was healed immediately of her sickness. And Jesus turned, said, who touched me? He, he didn't know who touched him. And so... Uh, looking down, he saw the woman, and he she told him what had happened, and he said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Your faith has made you well. So we receive healing by faith. Here's another one. We're made strong by faith. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 34, it says that out of weakness, they were made strong because of faith. Here's another one. We lay hold of of God's destiny or purpose in our lives by faith. Back to our theme scripture, which is 1 Timothy 6.12, fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on the eternal life to which you were called, and you have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. So here's talking about laying hold of the eternal life, not just that you're going to live eternally, but eternal life now. What is God's purpose in your life? How do we lay hold on what the things that God has prepared for us to walk in throughout the the time of our stay here on earth. We do it by faith. That's right. Uh, Paul writes in Philippians chapter 3, verse 12, he says, not that I've already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has laid hold of me. Did you know that God laid hold of you? He has a plan for you to walk in throughout the days of your life. It's called his will on earth as it is in heaven. Well, how do you walk in that? You walk in it, lay hold of it by faith. Here's another one, kind of an important one. We are made righteous by faith. Philippians 3, 9, it says that we, Paul says that I be, may be found in Jesus, be, may be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Jesus Christ, the righteousness which comes by faith. The only way you can be made righteous is by faith. Here's another one. How many of you have ever heard the word sanctified? It means separated is what it means. Acts 26, verse 18 says this. It says that to, Paul's preaching, he says, to open their eyes in order to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God that they may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith in me. So we're sanctified by faith. Here's another one. We live with Christ in us by faith. Galatians 2.20, Paul says, I've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And listen to what he says, the life I now live in the flesh, I live by, that's right, you got it. I live by faith. Those of you who are joining me, I'm, I'm talking about the fact that over the last two and a half years, the devil uh, and demonic forces and powers have been working systematically to to kill your faith and my faith, to cause our faith to become ineffective. And so he's been robbing us by all these things that have happened to us, all these sicknesses that have come, problems that have come, financial situations, family situations, all these things that he systematically he wants to rob you of your faith. You know why? Because he knows if you begin to activate your faith, faith overcomes the world. Come on. Faith is the victory that overcomes the world. And so I'm giving several reasons and several things about faith that you and I need to remember, you know, that, you know, that we can't do anything apart from faith. In fact, I believe that all progress in the kingdom of God is made by faith. So the last one I said is that Christ lives in us by faith. Here's another one. We receive answers to our prayers by faith. Mark 11, 24. Jesus said, Therefore, when you pray, he says, when you pray, everything that you pray about, he says, believe that you receive them and you will have them. That's Mark eleven twenty four. 24. Therefore, he said, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, Jesus said, believe that you receive them and you will have them. I can tell you're getting encouraged right now. I could just sense it in the spirit that this is going to help you, that you're going to, you know, to me, sometimes it's like I need to snap out of unbelief. I, I, I've been kind of moved over to my circumstances. I've been like Peter. I'm walking on the water, but I look at the storms. I look at the, you know, the wind that's blowing. I'm standing on the water. Next thing I know, I'm sinking because I have moved my eyes from Jesus 
He is the author and finisher of our faith. And I've stopped operating in faith. Jesus said to Peter, come. And he stepped out of the boat and started walking by faith. As soon as he turned to sight, he started sinking. And maybe you find yourself, you're kind of like, I'm sinking, but I've got good news for you. You can immediately snap back into faith. And when you do that, you can start walking on the water again. And so we receive answers to prayer by faith. Here's another one. We accomplish the work of God by faith. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 11, the Apostle Paul writes to them and he says, Therefore, we also pray for you always that our God would count you worthy of this calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power. So how do we work by faith? We How, how do we do the works of God? How do we manifest the power of God in our life? It's by faith. In John 6, verse 28 and 29, the people came to Jesus and they said this to him. They said, they said to him, what shall we do that we may work the works of God? I think it's time for the body of Christ to start working the works of God, don't you? So they said, what shall we do that we might work the works of God? And Jesus answered them and said, listen to what he said, this is the work of God that you believe in him whom he has sent. So we work the works of God by faith. That's right. Here's another one. And that is that we move mountains in our life by faith. Maybe you're facing a mountain right now and you've been trying to get over that mountain and, and, and that mountain just stands there and it just won't move. But here's what Jesus said in Matthew 17, verse 20. And Jesus said to them, they were, the, the disciples came and said, why could we not cast out this demon from this boy? right? They were trying to cast this demon out of this boy. It wasn't working. And Jesus comes walking up and the father of the son says, hey, I brought my son to your disciples. He's severely demon possessed or demon obsessed or whatever and uh, demonized. And he said they were not able to cast the demon out. And so the disciples, after Jesus cast the demon out of the boy, come to Jesus and say, why could we not cast it out? Here's Jesus' answer. Matthew 17, verse 20. So Jesus said to his disciples, because of your unbelief, for assuredly, I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible to you. And so maybe you have an impossible mountain facing you. I'm going to pray for you in just a moment uh, as I come to the end of this uh, session. Uh, that your faith is activated and you begin to see the mountain in your life, that which is blocking you, that which is hindering you, that which seems overwhelming to you. I've got good news. He said, listen, if you have faith as a mustard seed, Jesus said, you can say to this mountain, and that's, by the way, how we're going to activate our faith. We'll talk about that in another session. But we activate our faith by speaking to the situation. We speak what God says. So he says, you will say to this mountain, Jesus said, move from here to there and it will move and nothing will be impossible for you. Well, maybe you're sitting there thinking, well, you know what? I don't know if I have any faith, but you know what? If you're born again, the Bible says you've been giver, given the measure of faith. Everyone has been given a measure of faith. So you have faith. If you're saved, you could not have gotten saved or been born again apart from faith, because without faith, you can't be born again. So you believe God. It's not by anything you did. It's by you put your faith in Jesus, and you were saved, born again. Your sins were forgiven. But I want to prove to you that you actually do have faith. Now, how many of you would say to me, uh, Fred, I believe that God created the universe? I believe that God created the universe. I believe he created the stars, the galaxies, you know, the, the black holes, the, the, the vastness of our universe, over 10 billion light years big and growing, uh, you know, billions and billions of stars and, and, and hundreds of millions of galaxies in our universe is so big. And you, would you say that, you, like, I could not talk you out of believing that God created the universe? How many of you would say that? How many of you would raise their hand and say, I'm absolutely convinced that God created the universe. Well, let me ask you a quick question. Were you there? Did you see a video of God creating the universe? So you weren't there. It happened before you and I were ever born, but you're sitting here telling me, I absolutely believe that God created 
the universe. Well, let me ask you this. If you can believe that God created the universe, that's kind of a huge thing, right? And so if you can believe he created the universe, why can't you believe for his provision? Why can't you believe for him to deliver you from whatever addiction or problem or situation? Go? Why can't you believe that God would answer your prayers? Well, you can. Maybe you think, well, I don't have faith. I just proved that you do have faith. Because if you can believe that God created the universe, you can only do that by faith. So how did you do that? How did you have faith that God created in the universe? Because you read Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And off of those few words, you actually believe that God did all this. He created all these things. And that's what it tells us in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 3. It says this, By faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made with things which are visible. So the fact is, is that you and I have faith. Now, I'm going to close this video in just a moment, but I want to just go back and just once again, just say to you, why am I talking about faith right now? Because I believe that as we move into 2023, we need to reactivate our faith. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Why is it so important for you and I to read, meditate, study the Word of God, to speak the Word of God? Why do we need to do that? Because it activates our faith. And so God wants to activate your faith. Remember Jesus told Peter, he said, The devil has asked permission to sift you, but I prayed for you that your faith will not fail. So when you come through the test, Peter, he said, Go and strengthen your brethren. And so you might be in the midst of a sifting right now that's going on in your life. You feel like the devil is sifting your life, but you know what? I'm praying for you that your faith will not fail. So there are so many things. We're saved by faith. We please God by faith. We're justified by faith. We have access to God's grace by faith. We receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit by faith. We overcome temptations of the world by faith. We receive wisdom from God by faith. We obtain promises by faith. We get healed by faith. We're made strong by faith. We lay hold of God's purpose and calling in our life by faith. We're made righteous by faith. We're sanctified by faith. We live in Christ by faith. We receive answers to our prayers by faith. We move mountains by faith. How, and, and so look how important faith is. And so I started off with the scripture because I believe that the enemy has been systematically undermining our faith, trying to rob us of our faith. But 1 Timothy 6.12, remember that. 1 Timothy 6.12 says, fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on the eternal life to which you are called, and you made the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. And so I'm here to encourage you, and I'm here to tell you it's time to begin to fight the good fight of faith, maybe even fighting it by other means, but I'm telling you the thing that's going to have victory, the Bible says again, 1 John chapter 5, it says, uh, that those that those who are born of God have overcome the world, and this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Now, I want to pray in closing for you that it, I don't care if there's a mountain in front of you right now. Listen, I don't care if you've been depressed for months and you don't know how to get out of it. Today you can have it. You can snap right out of it because you're going to shift from unbelief and doubt. You're going to shift back into faith. Oh, yeah, that's right. I'm going to overcome by faith right now. Let me pray for you. Father, I pray for my brothers and sisters. And Lord, um, your word says we overcome the mountain by shouts of grace, grace to it. And we overcome by faith. God, I pray for the activation of faith in everyone that's watching this video. Lord, I pray that they just begin to activate and fight the good fight of faith and lay hold on the purposes and callings of God in their life, and they begin to see the victory. Faith is the victory that overcomes the world. And Lord, I just thank you. I pray that this would stir them up to say, you know what? I need to study the word again about faith, because faith comes by hearing. That's Romans uh, chapter 10, verse 17, and hearing by the word of God. Listen, we can't accomplish anything by faith, but God's going to give you the victory. And the Bible says God always causes us to triumph 
in Christ Jesus. God wants you to win, not lose. He doesn't want you to be defeated. He wants you to be not a victim, but a victor. And I just decree this over your life right now in the name of Jesus. So I think in, the, in my next sec section, I'm going to talk a little bit more about how do you fight the good fight of faith. But I want to just to sow this into you right now. And uh, so thanks for listening. Make sure you get a copy of my, copy of my new book, uh, One Simple Act of Obedience. Uh, just go to my name, Fred Crop, K-R-O-P-P, and you can uh, you can uh, go to Amazon. Uh, if you go to Amazon, go to my name there. You can find my book on Amazon. Also, if you ever want a copy of the notes that I'm teaching on that will help you, uh, you can email me at fcrop, F-K-R-O-P-P, -P, 1948, at gmail.com. Also, I have a website you can go to. It's just Fred Crop, one all together, fredcrop.com, and you can see what's happening in our ministry here. All right. In the meantime, I want you to know that God loves you, Jesus loves you, and I love you. Be blessed, my brothers and sisters.